Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to prime the canvas surface for oil painting. To do so, we're gonna need some, I like to use Liquitex Professional. Um, it was invented around 1955, so it's at least about 60 years archive proof. Of course, the old masters use an oil base or rabbit glue type of um, binder to the canvas. That's good for about 500 years, we don't know. I mean, there's been some situations where some oil paintings have been chipping. However, uh, you can use that, but that takes about a week or so to perfectly set up. And I really don't have that kind of time. So I want something that's gonna have about a 24 hour dry base where it's ready and maybe a 30 minute base before I can put on a second, uh, 30 uh, minute to an hour base before I can put on a second and third and fourth coat. I like to put on about four coats to my canvas, three to four coats. You can put on as little as one or two. It really depends on you. I'll at least put on two though, and uh, or more. It really depends on the type of surface you want to build. Also, what's not included, what I'm going to have is warm water, a sponge, a squeegee brush, and a normal primer brush. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to wet my canvas with the sponge. Okay, what I'm going to do is if you don't want to use don't have a sponge you could just use any rag or towel what i have is a towel again what you don't you don't have to get the canvas particularly soaked you just want to dampen the canvas all the way around and you can see what i'm doing i'm just moving the canvas from side to side getting the back and just right now i'm just covering the back and the sides of the canvas and the idea is to just Make the canvas so it can accept the prime a little bit better if it's slightly damp. It's just gonna accept that prime just that much better. Again, we're gonna just go around the entire canvas and add some dampening. Okay, and you can see on the floor what I have is a bit of a drop cloth so I don't damage my floor too much. Okay, now that we have the, now that we have the sides and back dampen, what I'm gonna do is dampen the top. Again, what I'm gonna do is basically go from one side to the next. And again, what we're not doing is we're not trying to wet and saturate it. We're just trying to get it damp so it can take the gesso that much easier, okay? And also what this will do is, it will help draw up. The gesso itself, this whole process, is gonna cause the canvas to get even tighter. So if we stretch this getting tight, the gesso, what it will do is, uh, when we apply this, and once it dries, it will tighten your canvas down even better. So we're just gonna go all the way around and wet the canvas. Okay, what I'm gonna do is paint the sides from a tilted position so that I don't get any dust. I'm gonna paint the back and the sides from just holding it upright with one hand and just going through. And then I'm gonna lean this against the wall for the sides and the top. And this is my first coat of gesso that I'm painting over the dampened canvas. Now you can see by dampening that, and you can do some experiments, try maybe not dampen it and putting on gesso. Really it's no hard rule. It's whatever is good for you and this works for me. But to me this just caused the gesso to get, not through to the back of the canvas, but causes the gesso to soak through the canvas a whole lot better and that's the whole thing because the oil paint is going to eat into the I mean it's basically going to rot naked canvas so you have to treat canvas with some type of primer to prevent the oil from eating your canvas up over time or else that's what will happen your painting will not last very long without a proper gesso treatment. Okay, 
And like I said, I'm being sure to cover my staples here so that my staples, to me, it just psychologically, I guess, makes me feel like my staples has something more to hold into. And just from doing previous paintings, uh, what this has allowed me to do was to uh, just to um, just make sure that the canvases, the canvases will stay on and be nice and strong. And also when this starts to stretch, because the gesso will make it stretch, it's stretching from the canvas, the gesso canvas, as opposed to stretching from untreated canvas. So basically all of the business portion of the canvas is treated. So the staples are part of the business part of the canvas because it is the thing that's maintaining the stretch of the canvas. So therefore that's very important. So since that is important, um, we want to treat that the best that we can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sit this guy up on the last. And if you get any drips on the other side, sometimes I just kind of dry brush that. Doesn't hurt the canvas at all. This is not the business side. But of course it has a little, again, uh, advantage of protecting even the back of the canvas from age. Because uh, what'll happen is once your canvas gets about 30 or 40 years old, uh, if it's not treated, you're gonna see just from canvas, because moths might eat it, age will get to it. Especially around the staples, they are made out of metal. And as you know, if any moisture gets to the staples, and that's another reason I like to seal my staples with gesso, it prevents rust. Also from happening to your staples, and now you get that nasty brown rust powder on the back of your canvas after about so many years. Of course you say, well, geez, I'm just a student. I'm not worried about that. If you're a student, you're not worried, then don't worry. But if you're somebody that's making a master painting, you want this painting to last for generations, then my suggestion is to go ahead and paint with your gesso the back of the canvas with the staples as well. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And also you wanna be sure to paint, of course, the sides because on the museum wall, if you decide to go without a frame, if you have a nice finished, and right here in the corner where you have your seams, I like to just kind of a little bit thicken on that, to kind of cover that seam a little bit better, it just makes it go away a whole lot better. And uh, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just get the gesso in there, really, really nice on that. Okay. And then also, you need to clean your brushes. Clean it on the excess canvas that's on the back. Not necessarily the back, but the part that if you want it to restretch, that's just gonna give you just a little bit more, you know, as opposed to just putting it in a jar, wasting it. It doesn't hurt to kind of do, just dry brush or clean your brush just using a spare canvas that's untreated, that's not taking anything. Okay, stretching canvas, priming canvas, roll two, take two, C, pick up. Okay, what we have now is uh, what I've done is I've placed two by fours down so that the canvas, now that I got the back and the sides painted, I can focus on my dampened top. That's still a little bit damp from what I painted. Now what I'm gonna do is just focus on my actual painting surface. Okay, making sure my surface is nice and clean. I'm just going to start applying. Now, you can use the sponges. If you want a smooth surface, I do like some surface of canvas. So, I mean, you could use these guys and they would give you a nice soaked in, but to me, it's not as nice as the brush. I do like a little bit of brush pattern in my, 
in my actual in my actual paint uh, on my actual surface. And usually by the time I get to the second, maybe the third coat, I'll start using these guys. Okay, the main thing is to go ahead and get your canvas going nicely with gesso. And I think you get a better result if you pour it in a, jug, a little jar first, as opposed to directly because this canvas, canvas is really hungry and this is one of the reasons you prime it. In other words, whatever you put on the surface is so porous. And that's the whole reason of the gesso. What the gesso is really doing is making the canvas a little bit less porous and of course you want to keep something called bite. That's basically what the oil paint is going to dig into when it sets up. The oil paint is going to use that bite to stay on the gesso. So, but what you're actually painting on is not the canvas. What you're actually painting on is this primer coat. So you want to be sure that you're treating this as a surface that's going to give you the type of uh, painting that you want to create. Some people like a very textured painting to start off with, depending on if they use thick paint or thin paint. A lot of portrait artists they really prefer that paint a little thinner because they want, they're going to be using sable brushes a little bit more than bristles and they're going to be putting on, put a lot more liquid medium into the paint, making the paint a lot more fluid and go on kind of like, uh, you know, and sometimes it's a stain. People like to put a lot of varnishes and stains down. Uh, it really depends on, you know, what you're going for as an artist. So again, you would just, I'm going to start at one end. These little bumpy parts where I was a little messy, just gonna brush those out. I'm gonna go all the way to the next end. I'm gonna save a little camera time, stop the camera. And uh, for the most part, I paint in multiple directions. Then once I get the canvas completely finished, which I'm gonna show after I get it finished, but I'm gonna just pause it right now to save, uh, uh, to save chip in the camera and also it's quite boring to watch me paint an entire large canvas like this. It's going to take a few minutes so I'm going to stop the camera. And you can see I'm about a quarter of the way over and, uh, and how much time it's taking with my first coat of gesso. Uh, what I'm going to do now is we basically uh, just want to show you I'm finishing off the first coat. Again I put down some wood and uh, got myself something to sit on. And just as we get the whole thing covered, what you wanna do is get your brush, get some gesso on the top piece, turn it to the light, look at it on the side, just to make sure there's no canvas poking through. And again, now that you are got everything covered, what you wanna do is start with your first direction. And my first direction is long ways. Now, while you're putting it on and getting it on, you can move the, you know, you can brush in any direction you want. And there's no general rule. You just look at the surface of the canvas and the surface of the canvas will actually tell you how to put down your brush stroke. I mean, if you want to go this way to kind of get it into the, the, the gnaw of the fabric a little bit more, then finish it off by brushing it this way. But as I'm putting the, the, the last little bit of the first coat down, I generally like to be in one direction. Then when I get into the second coat, I'm gonna be more in the short direction of the canvas, <clears throat> painting my strokes in general. Of course, this is a general rule because this is art and in art there's no hard rules, it's just practicality. And what works best for the type of painting you're trying to create. So I'm just finishing off everything. Almost with kind of like a, a little bit of dry brush and what I'm trying to do is just work the paint into the to the fabric. Now that I have this thing down flat, I have the light is just hitting it different. Sometimes you want to either change the lights around or the canvas around so you can really see those areas that might not be even. And what you definitely want is you want this thing on even. 
So here's an area where it's kind of a little not so even. And if you want to, you can thin this out. That will stretch your gesso out. But it also will cause the gesso not to be as thick. And the idea what I have, and this is why I damp it, because I want the gesso to kind of soak at least halfway into the canvas. If not, possibly even come through, to, through the back a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. Then that way I know that the whole canvas would be preserved, and especially the painting side of the canvas. Okay? And uh, I'm gonna pour out just a little bit more gesso. And this might be good for two coats. And again, I usually like three, but two coats will have to do uh, for this one. And I'm in two coats is good enough. Uh, I'm painting it on so thick. I'm just looking at the surface, it almost looks like one coat. And I'm using pretty high quality gesso. This Liquitex is professional grade, so almost one coat looks Looks like two coats of a cheaper gray gesso. So, it's pretty good. So two coats should be a cheaper gray gesso, three coats, or maybe even four. Okay? Again, I'm gonna max this bad boy out. And uh, just scrape inside. The reason I like to put it in a second jar, so I can just get everything, it just doesn't, soak into the canvas indiscriminately, the gesso goes where I put it, as opposed to wherever it wants to go. Okay, then ultimately, I just paint it into those fibers. And you can hear that nice drum sound. That lets me know I got a pretty tight, Really nice canvas here. Okay, so this is the process for coat one. For coat two, uh, is to repeat the same thing, just in the opposite direction. And then our canvas, and this will be, basically I have about, you see I put it on a several coats. And since I'm painting oil, I'm gonna also treat this with like an oil wash coat of oil. That could be skipped really, depending on how you paint. But a lot of times, again, it's painting on oil, an oil surface, as opposed to an acrylic surface. And uh, now this surface is made to kind of stick to oil paint as well. But also I think oil goes on oil better than oil goes on acrylic. The acrylic is still going to be somewhat soaky. It's going to still want to soak in a lot of that oil out of the pigment. Okay, so now I have the first coat down. And since it's down flat, I'm going to leave this flat. And that would be coat one for my canvas. And I did paint all of the sides and the back as well. And this is a pretty, I'm very happy about this canvas. It's pretty tight. And to me, that's the most crucial. Uh, other than putting on the actual prime coat, which I'm doing now, a nice tight canvas is paramount. And now we're gonna put on our second coat. When we did our first coat, we went the long distance of the canvas. Now what we're gonna do is do the short strokes, do the strokes in the short distance of the camera. And this will be this professional gesso that we're using here. You see, I have this upside down a little bit. So I'm trying to max out everything out of this gesso. Gesso is pretty much expensive. Um, and uh, some people just use lay, flat latex paint. But of course, that is not necessarily archivable. It's made to paint on walls. And you want something that's gonna last for hundreds of years on your painting. And basically I'm just going in the opposite direction along the short distance of the, of the dimension of the painting. The opposite direction that I did 
for the first coat. However, it's not necessary to go left to right, straight up and down, because you want to look at the surface of the canvas. You don't want to have long, skinny lines in one direction or another. This canvas is actually going to, this painting is going to be horizontal format. So ultimately, I want my lines to go this way. But when I scumble in my third coat uh, on this particular canvas. So what I'm doing now is putting on my second coat and I'm just kind of looking at the reflection of the light off of the surface to try to get a really nice, good, thick. Um, and this is the surface that the painting really does not, the oil paint does not go into the canvas itself. The oil paint actually sticks to the gesso, the prime paint which is this coat that we're, this layer that we're putting on. So the canvas itself, you don't want raw paint going onto the canvas. Raw paint is going to go on to, it's going to stick into and bind into the actual canvas. And you may have heard people talk about the tooth of the canvas. In other words, the canvas is like a grid pattern. And there are, even with the multiple coats of gesso on it, it does have little holes in it in the texture of the actual canvas and the oil paint will find those holes and basically go into those holes and stick and that's how the oil paint actually sticks to the gesso it finds the little crevices now again portrait artists like to have a sometimes they will water down the gesso and then they will sand it they want to have the smoothest surface possible to paint on. More abstract painters tend to like to have a little bit of texture. Okay, now, once I have my paint, my second coat down, and I wait a little bit of a time for it to kind of set up, but I don't necessarily want it to dry. What I want to do is just get it completely down. Of course, I've been painting in this direction. And that kind of sets, set the paint up so that the paint can be, so that the canvas can be, I mean, the gesso can be kind of on the painting. But then what I want to do is go in a circular motion because the particular surfaces that I like, I don't like any one particular directional brush stroke. So then what I do is I kind of scumble the painting. I've been painting this for about 10 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is kind of Kind of go in circular motions over the entire painting because this is the kind of texture when I do go with a thin layer, this is the kind of texture that I like on my paint. Okay, for my initial start. I don't necessarily like to see any pattern and it's almost like a dry brush because the gesso has started to set up it's not completely set up. And what I'm kind of doing is just scumbling in that, that other opposite pattern is already set up a little bit. And it's kind of getting the paint, the gesso, into that opposite direction. But it's I'm eliminating the brush strokes. By doing this circular motion, I'm really killing any horizontal or vertical brush stroke that may appear on the surface. And, every, and basically what you're doing is you're prepping the surface of the, camber, the canvas for your painting. So you just wanna have very, very smooth, and very, very workable surf, uh, surface for your painting, okay? And we're just gonna work this little circle of brush technique here and just try to get. Now what you could do is just take a little water and just kind of smooth this in and just let that kind of soak in a little bit that can be done but if you don't want that you could just use i like it a little bit thick and a little bit more consistent so that's what i'm going to do and basically this canvas has a very nice surface like i say we want to get every bit of what we can get out of this gesso and I want to make sure my surface is nice. Sometimes you can change your lights. So
so that you can see the reflection because the just so it is still wet also if you get any drips you don't want drips going down the side of your painting you just may want to go around just hit any place where you might have got a drip and that's the last thing I do before I'm finishing up my second coat I'm just kind of going around looking for drips and anywhere where my paint look like it's going again I want to put that circular I still have this pattern when I first put my first layer and this pattern to some level but that pattern is underneath this circle pattern so what I have is a pattern going this way and a pattern going the other way and also what I have is a pattern going circular so I have three different patterns in my gesso layer and of course what I want to do make sure I don't have any drips so I'm just going to kind of dry brush any drips off and go in and we should have a very nice workable canvas okay and I think if you use the pro level of this liquid liquitex they have the basic in liquitex gesso and pro two coats of this pro level is pretty good you can get three three is even better uh, for this for what I need three is fine if you want to you can do four all right now I'm going to apply the third coat of paint in this case the paint is going to be a little bit more watered down and I'm going in circular motions here and I'm starting at the back of the paint of the canvas and I'm working my way to the front again in this case I'm not doing any up and downs I'm doing only circular motions big sweeping and again this might be a base texture that may be underneath and this is just you know how I like my canvas Now you may not want this you may want something totally smooth but you use a fine sandpaper and sand every two coats but for me I do like some of the canvas coming through I like some of the texture of the gesso layer coming through and so forth and what I'm gonna do is just go in here with big sweeping motions and create my third layer of gesso on this canvas and this is going to give this canvas a really nice awesome texture for my basically I don't necessarily consider this my first coat but I do consider this the primer the coat that actually is going to connect the paint to the actual canvas and this is my kind of like a texture a general texture that I like to start out this particular painting style that I'm working with on my canvas and again a big sweeping motion and now now that we finished with the third coat okay and now that we finished with the third coat I'll see you when we actually take the pencil well, let me catch my breath <clears throat> okay now that we finished with the third coat we're going to actually wait until this dries we're going to set it up on the easel and i'm going to start drawing the layout for the actual painting and i'm going to show you how i go about setting up my layouts for my paintings then after we do the layout portion we'll go straight into oil painting oops i'm looking at the wrong camera <clears throat> okay let me wipe off my sweat Tuck my hair down a little oh, bit. Oh, so you talked like a little, a little too soon if it's too long, maybe. Okay, all right, let me do. Okay, now that I've, okay, let me pretend like I'm. Okay, now that I'm finished with my, oops, let me do it again. Can't do it in the middle. Okay, now that I'm finished with my third coat, um, which I basically use a circular pattern to do my third coat with, my third coat is just a little bit thinner than the other two coats because I really want that to be a nice smooth circular pattern that goes over top the other patterns. Okay, now that I've finished with that, we're going to move on to letting this dry and then I'm going to take a pencil and lay out my painting with a pencil. Now alternatively, what I could do is 
take a coat of oil paint, thin down very thin with uh, various binders, and just put some color here, because sometimes I do like, don't like to paint on white. Sometimes I like to have a base color. And by painting in oil like that, it makes the canvas so it's not as hungry. In other words, when you put the oil on, uh, on canvas, a gesso like this is acrylic gesso, it tends to suck up a lot of the oil. Then you're left with this dry, kind of chalky um, paint on the surface of your paint after it sucks, after it starts to set up. Remember that acrylic paint dries by evaporation and oil paint dries by actually a uh, process, a chemical process. It actually has to uh, metastasize or it has to actually kind of uh, make a chemical bond. So oil can take up to a year to be dry to the touch and it can take maybe even 50 to 100 years to totally dry and perhaps it may not even dry to 500 years. But as we know from the Renaissance artists that oil paint lasts at least 500 plus years. Okay, we're gonna apply the uh, third coat now. With the third coat, I'm using a more of a paste type of, uh, of gesso. What I did was I used the Liquitex because it's thinner. That's my first layer. That's gonna soak into the canvas more. And I'm using this uh, Plaza Gesso Studio Series Acrylic Gesso. It's much thicker. You can see how this is as I paint this on. This is my third coat where I'm going this way again. And this is going on much more pasty, even a lot more of the brush in there. And what I could do with this, if it's leaving too much brush pattern, I can use some fine sandpaper and sand that down nice and smooth. But of course, what I like to do is go in a circular motion again to make that type of pattern. Even though this is going to be used for some portraiture, this also can be used for <clears throat> some pretty gestural type brush strokes as well. So yes, I do like to paint a little bit gestural. But also I like a lot of layers, transparent layers and varnishes and whatnot and just to get that jewel-like effect. But at the same time, I don't want the canvas to soak up. Also, I'm being sure to paint around the sides. Get that built up as well. Don't want to neglect any portion and underneath on the staples. I want to neglect any portion of the painting. I want an even distribution of paint of uh, gesso everywhere. Now, if you don't want to carry this big jar around, another thing that I do, just so I can just lighten up a bit, is just to scoop some gesso. And I'll show you in a moment. Just take some gesso here, put this down. Scoop some into the top of the lid. This is almost like a little palette here. This just gives me the ability just to be a little bit more fluid getting around the canvas and putting that layer down. And I can just kind of get over it and just move my head to see what areas are shiny, what areas are dull, and just to see what type of finish overall is going down on the canvas. So I'm just gonna paint, paint out a really nice smooth surface here. Uh, again, sometimes you might have to go this way and that way and then finish off just to make sure you get this into the canvas really nice. Also pay attention to your edges, of course. Make sure that's taken care of. So. This is putting on that third layer, putting on a third layer with a much thicker type of gesso that's in a jar. Um, I use the good professional grade. This is the store plaza art grade uh, because the most important layer when you're putting these layers on is the layer that comes in contact with the raw canvas. That's where if I have to use more expensive gesso, that's the layer I want to use it on. Um, 
Subsequently, the layers on top, they're gonna get sanded. They're gonna get painted with different gesturals, depending on if you want more relief or impasto or brush strokes in the paint, in the, in the canvas surface. Okay, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, you can see. Okay, what I'm doing here is I have a fine sandpaper. I'm all getting ready to, a fourth layer is done and I'm just taking off any little rough pieces. Just kind of knock down some of the brush strokes with this sandpaper just kind of doing, not really trying to stay in any particular stretch. Not trying to stay in any particular place for too long. Just lightly hit that circle of motion. Just to knock down some of the uh, rough spots. If there's any rough spots, really all this is doing is just making my surface nice and smooth and ready to take a nice piece of paint. So now that I've thoroughly done that, I'm just gonna sweep off any little pieces of debris here. The sandpaper. Okay, now that layer. Okay, we're gonna use some more of our Plaza acrylic gesso. This is the store brand for Plaza Arc, which is a pretty good gesso. Um, we used Liquitex gesso before, which is the kind that was a little thinner in the bottle, so it can get into the thread of the uh, fabric. And really, that is my base, because that's more of a professional quality. It says professional on the bottle. However, on this Liquitex, it basically doesn't say professional, it says studio series. I'm thinking it's just as good. The price is about half um, of that of the Liquitex professional. And um, to me, uh, it's just as good. Now, how long would it last? 100 years, 200 years? 300, 500, 1,000, I don't know. In terms of archivability, that has yet to be determined because basically acrylic basically was, gesso was introduced in 1955. So it hasn't been around a really, really long time as opposed to the rabbit skin glue that the old masters use, but technology moves on, life moves on, things get better. And uh, we're using other pigments. We're using the, uh, the alkyd as opposed to uh, turpentine, lens face or linseed oils and things like that. You're using alkyd, so it has, it's kind of like an oil base based on petroleum. And uh, I'm using gambling paint with this. And what the alkits do, do is basically, it um, <clears throat> dries faster. Instead of something taking a week to dry, it dries within 24 hours. Um, and they say it can dry between eight, 18 and 24 hours completely dry. And within 68 hours, before it's tacky dry with the alkits. We'll see because Usually what I've been working with is the normal oils um, that basically linseed oils and so forth, various oils that take, you know, you could be a week later, come back to your painting and start brushing hard on it. Some of your colors might start bleeding. Okay, but this is the fourth coat and the fourth coat is giving us a nice surface here. I'm going in the opposite direction. Last time on the third coat, I went this way. I think I started out the first coat going this way. And this has built up a nice, nice surface on the cam canvas where there is some texture from the canvas that's still coming through, but less and less. Now, what you could do again is sand between these different layers. Um, I don't really like the sand because I kind of like the pattern that I put in with my brush. I do, that's why I like working with a brush as opposed to, some people work with sponges because they want a texture 
you know, they want that spongy texture. Some people use squeegees because they want a very smooth kind of texture. It really is up to you. What I like, even though I'm doing some portraiture in this painting, I like a little bit of texture just from the actual surface of the canvas itself. The imperfections, I think, gives the gives it up. That's the difference between a painting and photography. To me, it gives the picture more presence. It just gives it a little bit more, uh, you know, substance. There's more there on that um, that's coming through to the eye because the actual surface has so much, the actual surface has so much thickness and mass and density that that actually is going to show through in some way or another to the eye. And I think that's the appeal still of having the actual painting of something as opposed to having a flat printed photograph out of a machine. They can kind of create that texture either by having a pre-surfaced, kind of like what we're doing now, you're having a pre-surfaced um, piece of substrate and then you print a flat kind of ink with little bits of uh, pigment millions of little bits of fine detail pigments put down to make an image. In this case, we're not using fine bits of pigment. What we're using is globs of paint. And as you can see, I'm getting a little paint on some of my really fine equipment. Just so, I don't wanna get that off. I do not want that on my subwoofer to my audio mixing station. But again, I do want a nicely primed surface here. And this surface has a nice, this, this canvas now has a nice surface here to work on. And once it sets up, we're gonna be ready for drawing and laying out the actual image that I'm going to paint on this canvas once we uh once this and i think um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna let this set up a little bit and i'm gonna go in with a little dry brush like i did before and do my circular pattern over top this last pattern i'm gonna do a circular pattern and that circular pattern is gonna knock out some of these slight brush marks that's going up and down but it's not gonna kill them all it's gonna kind of level them down some and it's gonna add a circular pattern. And that's kind of what I want. I kind of want the brush strokes kind of going here, there, and everywhere, but I still want it kind of even because I do like my gesso to be built up. Kind of like a snow. I look at, think of it like snow. You know, suppose of a two inch powdering, I like at least 68 inch. No, and it's even better when it's a whole foot, 16 inches deep. To me, the deeper it is, the better. Better snowmans you build, the better, more fun you're gonna have in it. And the same thing is with a canvas, it's like, uh, the more interesting this surface is, in terms of thickness and substance, the more fun I'm gonna have when I actually start laying in oil paint on that surface. Okay, and again, don't forget to finish up by going along the sides, just getting any waste. I usually don't go in there with a dry brush along the sides. I usually go in the side with a slightly damp brush and just hit a little coat along the side, because again, Oftentimes the viewer, if there's no frame on the picture, 
especially when it's in your easel. It just looks nice with a nice thick layer of white on the sides of your painting. When you have bystanders come up to take a gander at your painting, looks like, okay, this is some nice work here. This is some kind of painting or artist that we should take seriously. Because why? They took the time to really make a very beautiful canvas. So you can only imagine what the artwork is gonna look like because the painting already looks very, 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 very interesting. You can still see that this, this uh, gesso is tuning up really nice. And already, since I painted it on so thick, I'm not adding any water at this level. It's so thick that it's really on there. I mean, I can say it's that deep snow as opposed to a powdering. What we have is a lease. It's four coats, so I'm gonna say eight feet, eight inches of snow here. In certain areas that might have built up to about 12 to 16 inches, you know, like you do with snow, like it's a little bit of imperfection in it. Some areas gonna be a little bit slightly deeper than others, but by and large, it just looks like some beautiful snow there to play in. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're just having some beautiful snow, a beautiful gesso for our painting. Okay, what I'm doing is just get this nice circular pattern with the sandpaper all around. I'm just gonna knock off this last little piece of debris. And I really don't see any brush strokes in it at all. It looks pretty good, but if you don't want at all to have any horizontal or vertical brush strokes, we can possibly blend in a little bit of circular pattern pattern in. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot. This is mostly gonna be a dry brush kind of technique here of this. I'm just gonna get a little bit, just like this on my brush. And I like to start in the center when I, this is my last layer. This could almost be considered a fifth layer. But again, I'm not putting this layer on particularly thick. This layer here is a circular motion. It's more or less the last patina that I'm gonna put on the canvas. What this will do is, cause me not to get so much a brush stroke on a canvas or a texture. I want a texture, but I want a very fine texture. Now, as you can see earlier, I was sanding between layers, just with a light sand, but not a very, very heavy sandpaper. Not one that's too fine either, because I kind of want the paper to kind of bite into it a little, into the gesso a little bit to kind of, you know, just kind of create some different things in there. So I got it where the, the sandpaper is not so fine, but it's not so coarse either. And this, what I'm doing here is just basically putting in a circular pattern. And right now I'm on this side of the canvas. I'm trying to create this as much as I can but I really don't want to put a coat down. It's so already I'm even, already I got coverage everywhere because I have four, I have coverage everywhere because I have four layers and the last two layers went on with this thicker uh, gesso here, this plaza gesso, plaza art gesso, which is cheaper. It's in the can, it's thicker. I first used the Liquitex much more fluid. Instead of just having water and have it diluted, I like to kind of, you know, what I did with the canvas at first was wet it with a rag or a sponge. Okay, now, as another step that we can do, 
other than sanding and various types of brush strokes that I like to do on my canvases. Another thing that I like to do is there's an option. There's all this is option is depending on what I want to do with this particular painting that I'm going to make for it is to after this set up, I'm going to give this 24 hours or so to totally be ready. Then what I'm going to do is make a little varnish with my gambling paint. And I'm probably going to use a little bit of the, the uh, gambling medium, one of the quick dryer ones, something nice and thin. Just make a little wash. And I'm gonna add a little tone. Whatever's gonna be my base tone, just so that I don't have a white um, canvas, you know. I'm gonna add a little tone. Also, what that does is, and that's gonna take about 24 hours to dry as well. So what that's gonna do is be another little small coat of oil that would be between my canvas and the actual oil painting that I'm going to paint. So actually, my oil paint will bind to it as opposed to just to the, the gesso undercoating. Also, what that gives me is that if I have two colors that bump up against each other, it gives me kind of like a little color underneath. It kind of lets that color show through a bit. And what I'm doing is just dappling just a little bit of this. Because again, this is more or less a dry, dry brush thing. And it's really more or less for me to kind of add a circular kind of texture that is going to go over the different this way texture. So I have blended in this canvas circle of textures, left, right strokes, plus the blend of the actual fabric itself, plus the sanding, just a little bit of everything. But for the most part, I'm gonna hit this again with some finer sandpaper before I even, before I even add the last and final <clears throat> glaze of oil paint. Like I say, I'm probably gonna just get some oil paint, thin it down with some, uh, some of the, one of the, hit perhaps some linseed oil, perhaps some bar saw, and just kind of give the paint a nice oil wash with a color. Uh, for this painting, it's gonna have a lot of blues in it, so. I'm also gonna have flesh tones in this painting and some nice dark grays and maybe some blacks and some nice vivid bright whites and yellows. So I usually like to go for a complementary color as my wash, something that might show through underneath it. So I might pick a nice blue, kind of a tinted down blue color. Or I might take pick a nice umber, burnt umber, a tint of that, or something of this nature, and make it slightly translucent so that, uh, <clears throat> make it translucent so some of the white actually can show from this gesso layer. Okay, so what I believe I have here is a very, very nice canvas surface work on it. I think I'm going to leave it right there. I have my texture, my final texture, which is a circle, circle of motion. There that's going to be on the top. That's going to be my last gesso type of thing. I'm only going to really concentrate this one on the top because this coat right here, which is actually a type of fifth coat, it's not so much a coat it's a texture or a patina or a treatment that I want to give my canvas. And then what I'm going to do is use a very fine pumice paper. And then I'm going to hit that with circular motions as well. And then she's going to be ready 